This is a practice exercise from page 133 in the textbook. We're looking at determining oxidation states of elements within compounds. So there's a list of oxidation number rules in your textbook you should be familiar with. We're going to go through and apply those to practice figuring out oxidation states. So for the first one, we see that it's a compound composed of phosphorus and oxygen. Of those two elements, it is oxygen that we are most likely to know the oxidation number for. So oxygen is most likely going to have an oxidation number of minus 2. Notice that the oxidation numbers are written differently from charges. We would write the charge as 2 minus, but we're going to write this oxidation state as minus 2. There are 5 oxygen atoms, which gives us a total oxidation state of minus 10. Working backwards, we know that since this is a neutral compound, the oxidation numbers need to add to zero, which means the oxidation state for the phosphorus atoms needs to be plus 10. Well, since there are two phosphorus atoms, that means that each phosphorus atom needs to have an oxidation state of plus 5. So in this case, the oxidation state of phosphorus is plus 5 and the oxidation state of oxygen is minus 2. Let's take a look at the next compound. Now we've got sodium and hydrogen. In this case, it is sodium that we should be most familiar with. Sodium has an oxidation state of plus 1, which makes sense because its charge is usually plus. And then hydrogen in this case is acting as a non-metal, so this would be a sodium hydride molecule, which means our hydrogen is going to have an oxidation state of minus 1. Since this compound does not have a charge, when we add the oxidation states together, we should get 0. So that's how we know that hydrogen has an oxidation state of minus 1. Looking at the next one, this one's a little different because we've got a charge, so we'll need to keep that in mind when we figure out our oxidation states. So we're going to worry about the chromium and the oxygen. Again, we know that oxygen typically has an oxidation state of minus 2. There are 7 oxygen atoms, which means we're looking at a total oxidation state there of minus 14. Now we know that the total oxidation state here needs to add to minus 2. I know that because there is a charge of 2 minus on this compound, which means that the positive oxidation state only needs to be plus 12. Because if the oxidation state is plus 12, that'll get me to that charge I want of 2 minus. In order to do that, I've got two chromium atoms. So the oxidation state of each chromium must be plus 6 because plus 6 times 2 gives me plus 12. Adding that to the minus 14 from the oxygen gives me that overall of minus 2 from the charge. So each chromium has an oxidation state of plus 6, and each oxygen has an oxidation state of minus 2. Again, the oxidation numbers add to the charge, and this is the first one we've seen with a charge. Okay, moving on. So the next one we've got, we have tin, and bromine. Since bromine is a halogen, we can be pretty confident that its oxidation state is minus 1. There are four bromine atoms, so we're looking at a total oxidation state of minus 4 there. Since there's no charge, that tells us that the positive oxidation state needs to be positive 4. Since there's only one tin, that means that that tin needs to have an oxidation state of plus 4. So that's the oxidation state for tin. Notice for the oxidation numbers, we do write the 1 in. This is different than charges. and charges, we wouldn't put the 1 in. In oxidation states, we will. Okay, so the last one, we've got barium and oxygen. Notice that this time they're asking us to solve for oxygen, which should seem a little strange because typically we assume that oxygen is in the minus 2 oxidation state. This time it's going to be a little different. We're going to work from the barium, since barium always has the same oxidation state, and that's plus 2 because it's an alkaline earth metal. There's only one barium, so the total positive is positive 2. 
Since there's no charge on this compound, that means the total negative needs to be negative 2. Well, since there are two oxygen atoms, that means each oxygen atom must be in an oxidation state of minus 1. So this is a little different from what we've seen before. Very often, most of the time, oxygen is in that minus 2 oxidation state, but every so often it can be in that minus 1 oxidation state, and that minus 1 oxidation state is when we have peroxide. And peroxide is O2 with a 2 minus charge instead of O1 or just one oxygen with a 2 minus charge. So that's peroxide that is a different oxidation state of oxygen. So most of the time, oxygen has that minus 2 oxidation state, but every so often it will have minus 1, so just keep your eyes open for that. Again, remember that oxidation states are different from charges. With oxidation states, we put the sign, so either positive or negative, and then the value first, and we do write in the number 1.